Hi guys, today I'm going to share with you my testimony. Before everything you have to know, English is not my native language. So if I make mistakes, just ignore them, because today is just about the message. I don't want any hate, I don't want to encourage bullying or hatred among you guys. If you don't agree with me, it's okay, I'm not here to judge, I'm not here to tell you what to do and how to live your lives. It is fully your choice. I'm just here for those who really know what I'm talking about and they want and need a breakthrough. I really ask you guys, please watch this this video till the end I don't want you to get things wrong I don't want you to misunderstand my words maybe you would ask why am I doing that I knew that one day this day will come I shared my testimony within my country millions of people heard it and now I feel so strong that it's time to take it internationally and really it's not about fame it's not about money it's not even about me if you can't believe that I was so afraid to talk about my story to talk about my past because of family because of parents of people like around me of friends but I knew it was the right thing to do so it all has to start with being vulnerable and I'm vulnerable now in front of you guys and I decided to do that because I know out there are a lot of you who need to hear this you're not alone and your struggles are not gonna last forever and you're not forsaken and you're not forgotten I've come to know that God is healing and God can take your pain and your suffering and your shame and make something beautiful out of it so that it can impact millions of lives. Believe me, I whipped when I knew I should do that, but I'm doing this trusting that God really can save someone's life through this. So this is it. I grew up in a non-Christian family. I mean, my parents know about God, kind of know about his existence, but they never prayed or go to church or at least do something that would make them call themselves believers or Christians. I always knew about God from my grandma. She taught me to pray and taught me about Jesus and who he is. But very few of it, but also I'm so thankful to that. At 13 years old I got a ticket to a Christian camp. When I discovered it's gonna be a Christian camp, I wanted to return the ticket but thanks God I couldn't do that. There and then began the adventure and the value of my life. I've discovered that real Christians and those Christians Christians who pray a lot and read the Bible and know the heart of God are really cool people. I saw their charisma and their happiness. I was wondering how they could be so satisfied and so good to me and to others all the time. It just couldn't fit my brain. There I truly understood who Jesus was and what he did on the cross. In that camp I decided to repent and to accept him in my heart as savior and best friend. I just cried a lot like a few hours and just couldn't stop neither explain what that feeling was. Unfortunately when I got home I returned to my old lifestyle. I was expecting for a big supernatural change but it never happened. And so I did every year. I was going at the same camp every summer having the same deep moment and feeling until I got back home. But at a certain point at 16 or 17 I think I started to read the Bible to go to church and things like began to move a little bit. As a throwback also at 13 or 14 years old I discovered word sexuality. As every child or teenager, I started to learn about it, to learn about my body, about my attractions, about everything. In that period and even more after, I was very alone, I had no friends, I was a forever alone guy with a lot of depressions. That's why at the moment I discovered I liked both girls and boys, I didn't know how to react and whether it's normal or not. At the same period, I had a lot to do with hatred and bullying. I was so used to it because of my appearance, because I looked so different than the other boys of my age. Also, I was very skinny because of some serious health problems. I had a very bad acne and remember just didn't want to leave the house because of shame. I felt like my parents don't understand me. It was about 90% of my struggles they didn't know about. I was and felt completely alone. I just couldn't understand what I did so bad and so wrong and why those things happened to me. Why am I supposed to like suffer so much? I even remember like begging friendship from some people that seemed cool to me and I just wanted them to be models for me. It was so hard to be so vulnerable every time and just to be kicked out of every group and every situation and all this stuff. And now this new thing with sexual identity. Lately I understood what society has to say about it. I understood that it was not normal but just couldn't understand why I liked it and why I felt like that. 
Getting closer to God in that period, I understood that homosexuality is a sin. I started to have a lot of questions, to have battles and struggles, and didn't want to be like that anymore, but just hadn't anyone to talk about. It says in 1 Corinthians 6, Or do not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God, do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swilders will inherit the kingdom of God and that is what some of you were but you were washed you are sanctified you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of the God I discovered that and just couldn't stop thinking about it very weird was the fact that despite all of that I never admitted I was a gay or a bisexual even when doing things and talking to other gay guys I didn't admit it I wanted to quit it but just didn't know how I felt like trapped in there I was embarrassed a lot for my thoughts, for my desires, for my actions, for what I was and just started to have that wrong and guilty feeling in the front of God. I hated me, I hated my life, I just cried a lot. There were seasons when depression felt like an usual thing and just felt like home in my anxiety and loneliness. After leaving my country for a university, after several months of being again away from God and living a mediocre life, I discovered a church and some people that were really into everything God is. I started to go to that church and that was the real moment when I got closer to God and just prayed a lot and just got to know Him more and more. More about his love, about his justice, about his grace, about everything he is. At a certain moment I felt like better, just didn't think so much about my problems, about my past, about my struggles. I just used to remind God about them in some of my prayers, usually when I fell or when I fell so down. I just was trying to leave it all behind. Of course there were a lot of ups and downs, there were a lot of battles in my mind and in my body and it was terrible hard because there was nobody to talk about it, nobody to know it. I was alone in my fight and that was terrible. But at a certain point God told me that he is giving me healing and that I should go to others and tell them about my victory and about my past. I was so happy, I just felt it inside my everything, inside my body, inside my heart. I felt his touch upon me and the words he gave me. I also had to understand that it's gonna be a process and I had to walk into that healing in obedience and thankfulness. And it only depended on me whether I was well or not. It depended on how much time would I spend with him and how was my attitude regarding everything happening in my life. I really wanted to do that, to give up myself, to give up my sins, my past, my old lifestyle, my will, my bad habits, my sins and just to lay everything at his feet. So that that's what I did. They were freaking hard things to do. But I just called upon his name and his grace to help me move on. And every time I failed, I just stood back up and moved farther. Because Jesus himself told me that his love and his opinion doesn't change and it doesn't depend on things I do. As long as I fight with all my sins and don't accept them in my life and don't enjoy them. And that was overwhelming. Let me read something from Isaiah 43. You can take it and I ask you to take it personally and written for you. But now this is what the Lord says. Do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God. Since you are precious and honored in my sight and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for you your life. Do not be afraid for I am with you. How is that too? So I decided to go for that and just shared my testimony on YouTube and TV and all my country saw that. It was a very big pressure. It was a lot of hate in there. My parents didn't talk to me like several weeks and I lost a lot of friends but despite all of that I knew I was doing the right thing there came a lot of people to me to ask for help. I felt the mercy God has for everyone out there and I felt his heart for people. And believe me, I'm so happy now. I know what I should do next with my life. I know my purpose. I know who I am and what's inside me. And I'm so thankful to God for all of this. I don't want you to hate one another. For God is love, but he is also, as I said, justice. That's why he hates the sin. But he doesn't hate the sinner. It's a very big difference.
He wants all of us to be changed and to live in righteousness. We just have to understand that we cannot do that by our own. We need Jesus and we need the price he paid for us on the cross. Please just try to think about it. I know it can be freaking difficult to understand and so weird, but please just give it a chance. Also for any questions, you can leave comments here or you can message me directly on Facebook or Instagram. I have so much more to say, but it would be too much for a video. Let me know if you need more videos like that with this subject or other subjects. Please just don't be silent, just search for help. I know that homosexuality is not a sentence to death. Neither is depression or any other sin. You can overcome homosexuality, you can overcome depression, you can overcome fear and shame, you can overcome anxiety, you can overcome any other immorality. And if you had suicidal attempts or you think about doing that, killing yourself, just don't do that. Believe me, there's hope for you. There's a lot of people who can help. There's love for you. Just don't give up. Try and find those people who can help you. Just speak about it and ask for help. Don't hold it inside of you. Don't make the mistake I did to fight by yourself. It's freaking hard and you don't have to do that. Please ask for help. No matter what your problem is, there is still hope for you. Jesus is still available for you. His grace is still available for you. Please make it count. I know out there are some of you that feel so guilty and feel like they don't deserve anything and just feel like there's no hope for them. But please listen to that. God is still able. He still loves you. He sees all your suffering and situation. There are so many valleys and mountains we can't climb, but He is able and He is there in your fight and He loves you so much, you are so, so loved. Just please believe that. It's only your choice to let or make something change. I feel like this video is gonna help so many people. Just be blessed guys and take care of your hearts. Please take care of your hearts. And if you know somebody who needs this video, this message, share it with him. It's not about me. It's not about fame. It's not about my reputation. It's only about Jesus and what he can do in your life as he did in my life. Bless you guys.